in this video I will show you how to transfer your settings from your Android phone to your iPhone. I have here my Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5 and on the right side I have the iPhone 16 Pro Max and the new case. So I will use both phones but I want to be able to use the iPhone with the apps I have on the Android. So that's going to be hopefully working as it should. The iPhone is showing the greeting, the hello greeting, so that's it's ready to be set up. There is enough battery, so there is enough battery on the iPhone and there is enough battery on the Android and it's always good to have a charger nearby and I installed the Move to iOS app, this is from Apple, on the Android phone. There is a privacy policy, I have to agree, I guess, so it's easy to switch from Android to iOS. They also have another app to switch from iOS to Android. Photos, videos, albums, actually I don't want to move photos. If you use Google Photos, back up your photos before transferring. Okay, so I should I should back up actually what I'm going to do. I'll move all the pictures and videos out from my Android phone so it reduces the chances that this is going to take forever. Um, I always keep the files, I, keep, I move them to the computer, I back them up to a folder so that the phone doesn't have to be full of pictures and videos. So I will move the pictures and videos and get back now. Okay, so I started the computer, plug in, after I plug in the USB, the default for my Xperia is to access the files, so it's going to start, the files will be accessible and I will move them from the computer right now. Okay, so I plug in the phone, it shows here. And I have this folder where I put, before I copied the pictures from the iPhone, I took a few pictures, then I had a, I did a reset of the iPhone. And that's the internal storage of the Android phone, the Xperia, and I'll go to the DCIM folder. So I'll move the screenshots. I move the screenshots and this is empty, Videography Pro, Photography Pro, cut, move this to Okay, so I think this one is ready. I removed the folder from the phone and now the pictures are moved away from that phone. There are still some images from Canva and Snap, Snapseed, but I will leave them. I wanted to make sure that it's not transferring files that I don't really want to transfer. Maybe it's gonna give me an option to ignore pictures. Move to iOS. It's easy to switch from Android to iOS. Okay, we'll see about that. Restore apps and by signing into your Apple account. Photos and videos is retransferred. I don't really want that. And let's see, continue. Terms and conditions. I guess it's going to be a long story to read all this. So I accept by default. Send up data usage. They give me the option not to send it. So I'll not send it. Allow app location permission. Okay. I will have to allow it while using the app. Turn on notification, OK, allow, and, oh, interesting. So I can connect the phone directly to the, oh, that's interesting, OK. Maybe I have to set them up, or I have this phone. I have this cable which is a fast USB 3.2 cable and I guess I could try to use this. I will start the setup for the iPhone. Okay, I'll plug in the charging cable on the iPhone just to be sure. So 
I'll start charging the iPhone. 64%. English. Okay, I'll choose the default region, Cyprus. And default, looking for nearby devices. It's just charging, so I'll do. I don't know what it's doing, it keeps resetting to this. English, Cyprus, continue. Set up with another device. Okay. And the keyboard, I'll customize the settings. Remove Greek. I can add later, later another keyboard. Uh, okay, Romanian. I'll add it. English UK. But actually, I want it English US. So, English US. I add English US. Remove this one. And add the Romanian to English US. To that one. Okay. So now we have emoji English. Romanian first and emoji and continue. Dictation, which one I for dictation I only want to use the English US. Continue. I choose the Wi-Fi network. I'll sign into the Wi-Fi network and be back. Okay, the phone is activated now. It will take a few times to activate. If you already inserted a SIM card with mobile data, you don't need the Wi-Fi to activate the iPhone and now it's part of the what you can set up for yourself or for a child or someone else I choose to skip face ID you can you can enable it and you can choose to transfer your apps and data you can choose from Android so from Android here is what we're going to do because I want to transfer the apps so I don't have to install too many apps in the end, I'm not sure how much it really transferred, but it did transfer the watch, WhatsApp chats, contacts, and messages. You could use Wi-Fi for this, but USB should be much faster, especially I use a fast USB-C cable that's from the T7 Shield, so it's really, it can do for sure 10 gigabits per second, and it will use the maximum speed at which these two phones are compatible to talk to each other, to, to communicate. And I have to enter the passcode for uh, this session. There is a session for the passcode and I got a bit confused here about which passcode to enter. So I got, it, it didn't work the first time when I tried, but now I have on the iPhone on the right, you see the code and I enter this code on the Android phone. That's the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5 and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And now they will have some kind of a session. This is for security, for safety, to make sure that it's your device transferring to also your device and not someone else trying to extract the information from your phone. And now the phones are communicating, the Android phone communicating with the iPhone. And I can choose to move messages, contacts, call history events, even the Google accounts about the Google account, it was a bit strange because I still had to sign in again on the iPhone and I'm not sure if it really did anything. And I chose not to copy the photos or actually the photos, they were not, there were not many photos, there were no photos anyway. So um, the photos can make this very long. I mean, it's gonna increase the time of this uh, it's taking. But if you don't have a way to back up your photos or pictures or videos, you could use this to transfer over the files. But just make sure that you don't lose your pictures or videos. And especially or for WhatsApp, there is some kind of a special way to transfer the chats from Android to iOS. And I used it and it did work. So that's really good. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't take much time because there wasn't much information to transfer at all. And uh, this is mostly, this is all because I didn't transfer the photos. I backed up the photos. I actually moved them out from the iPhone. I moved them out from the Android. And you should do this too also. 
you should have your photos copied outside from your phone and to onto two drives, hard disk, external hard disk or external SSD. It's always better to have them like this. And if you need to use the photos from your phone, you can have a copy on your phone, but it's good to have a, another copy on another device. So now the Android is done. We are ready with the iPhone and it's time to sign in into the Apple account. This is really exciting. I've been using Android since a long time. At the beginning, I was using iPhone actually, but um, yeah, I stopped using iPhone after iPhone 5S, that was my last iPhone. And now it's time to go back to iPhone. And I have already a, an Apple account. I have an, an Apple ID, so I will sign in with that one, or I could create a new one. You, you choose what you want to do. You can create a new account, a new Apple account, iCloud account, or you can sign in to your existing one. If you already have a, an account, it's much easier. You can transfer the settings from your Android phone or even from your old iPhone. In my case, because I was using Android and my really, really old iPhone didn't really have anything that I use now, I wanted to choose to transfer from Android to iOS so that I get the apps that I'm using and the messages. My old iPhone is really not used at all and I don't know, I could use it as a sound recorder. Let me know in the comment section below what do you do with your old phone if you sell it or if you reset it and if you do reset it, where do you sell it? If you sell it to some friends or to sell it on uh, online marketplaces or you think it's better to keep it as a backup in case you need a backup phone. Now, once you accept the terms and conditions and you can choose to update automatically or to download only, and then you decide when to update. Also, location services, they're pretty important. I believe you need to use a Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever it's called now. You can choose here whatever options you have. I prefer dark mode, so you should definitely give it a try, dark mode or automatic. And this is the silent mode option and the silent mode on iPhone 16 Pro Max, it has actually two function buttons, but the silent mode here, I prefer to keep it as silent, but you could use it for multiple functions, even as a camera button. The button I was saying earlier is the camera control button. And I really like this one. I, this is what made me buy the iPhone 16 Pro Max, not the 15 Pro or Max. And the iPhone is ready now and it's time to start using it. You can use the iPhone, you can install the apps, extra apps you might want, but after you did this transfer from Android, you will actually see that there will be apps installing and you will have the call history, the messages, you, you will have many things on the iPhone the same way you had them on your Android, but some apps will not be able to work. Also, you get the FaceTime and iMessage, which is nice. This is the global version of the iPhone 16 Pro Max A3296. And you get FaceTime, iMessage, TikTok, anything. In the EU, I don't know, we never had the problem to install TikTok. And I tried to start the Amazon, Amazon app here and it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, you can choose to enable or disable personalized ads. I usually try to disable them if I want, if I can, if they allow me. But um, yeah, sometimes you might want to have personalized content. So it's something that you want and not generic. But this is a matter of preference here. And uh, passwords, I always like to save the password in a password manager because I will never remember so many passwords. And the worst things to do is to use the same password on multiple websites. You should always use a different password. And the password manager is a simpler way to, to do this. Here you see there are apps being installed, but some apps that didn't work, like Amazon. When I tried to install Amazon, I don't know, it didn't work. But I searched for it on the App Store and it was okay. I mean, I could get the Amazon app also. In general, there will be things that you have to do. The, the way apps are arranged on the screen, it will be not the same. You will have to arrange your apps and the folders and everything again. And here, 
when you use the browser the first time, you have the option to choose the default browser, which is great. They don't do it on like because they want to do it. They do it because they are forced to do it, I believe, in the U at least. I don't know if they do this in the whole world. But you give you get a, a prompt to choose the default browser. Here I am signing into my Google account and this is because I actually I like the Google apps and I like the whole idea of how the Android system is made. I just like the iPhone also and I wanted to try to use the iPhone and I already like it a lot. There are some things, the music app is really great for the, for the iPhone. I like some things a lot more on iPhone and I hope I get used to the things that I don't like on the iPhone. We'll see about that. And there is there was a problem with the photos on iCloud. The the problem with the photos in iCloud is that you only get five gigabytes of storage space in iCloud, and your phone it's at least this phone. This is the iPhone 16 Pro Max, 256 gigas. So if you're backing up all your photos to iCloud, you will run out of space very fast. That's a way to sell you the subscription, the iCloud Plus. And I'm not ready to get the iCloud Plus yet, probably not anytime soon. But I can back up the, fo the phone settings and everything to the computer. And uh, for now, I back up to iCloud, but without the photos. The photos, I actually prefer to keep them, to move them to the computer once in a while and not to have too many files, too many photos on the phone. In case the phone, I lose the phone or it gets damaged, so there's not too many photos lost. Uh, without iCloud is convenient, but also I had some issues. Sometimes it was not syncing. I don't know. There was something strange. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you set up your iPhone from an Android phone.